A very good evening to each and to all of you, and welcome to our carols, candles, and communion Christmas Eve service. It really does feel, at least from this side of the camera, and I'm sure a similar thing is true on your side of the screen, like an irreplaceable part of the Christmas experience is missing. The smiles and the laughter, the excitable buzz of our children, the many faces that visit us from around the country and across the world. Up to three and sometimes even four generations of family gathered here together, all in a place that is presently cool, quiet and empty. Beautiful, don't be mistaken, but empty. The sacrifices made over the course of this year, and especially during this time, by many of you who find a deep sense of connectedness and belonging and being together at St. Columbus, have meant, and to the very best of our knowledge, that to date our church, while continuing to meet in varying ways and seeking to extend care and compassion to one another and to others, has in no way contributed toward the spread of the coronavirus. This is something for us to be particularly grateful for and to hold on to as a source of motivation in recognizing and seeking to protect the immeasurable gift and the sanctity of human life. While we naturally lament that this is the way in which we meet this evening, let us also take the opportunity to appreciate what we do have, to make the most of a different surrounding, and to be open to the unexpected surprise that is at the heart of Christmas. The flow of this evening's service will move between carols, readings and prayers. Words will be displayed on the screen for you to read or to sing at the appropriate times. And life's short. Don't worry about what other people think. If your neighbours don't hear you, it means that you're not singing loud enough. For those who didn't manage to pick up the pre-packed communion elements uh, yesterday or the day before from the church, we feel every freedom to take this opportunity to go and get some bread, uh, some juice or some wine from around the home and to use the same in being a part of uh, that aspect of the service. Finally, make sure to have your candles with you as you'll be directed partway through the service to light the same. And so we begin by quietening our minds and reflecting on the last couple of weeks, listening to the words of the song that lead us through the lighting of the four Advent candles. first reading this evening is from the prophet Micah, chapter 5, 
verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, and then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Let us pray together. As we try to imagine that evening so many years ago, the unexpected visitations, the weather beaten and watchful shepherds, an awe struck father and a tired, wandering mother, we pause in awe before you, Holy Father. The very best of things ever to be spoken were given full and unique expression that night as they were embodied through the birth of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, even where we have turned away, your love has remained steadfast. At his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with those across the world and with all the company of heaven, we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. 
I am reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6, and chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. We listen together now to a few excerpts from the poet and prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. opening verse of Psalm 27 reads as follows. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One of the final written pieces of the New Testament uses the same image for the divine when it says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And a few verses on, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Finally, we hear the words of Jesus in the gospel according to John. 
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so we turn our attention now to the Christ candle. And as we do so, we are reminded that its light, as well as the light of those that enfold it, are symbolic in nature. The strength of the symbol is both in its immediate beauty and that at the very same time, it points away from itself to something else. To the one who is the source of hope and in the face of despondency, peace in the midst of conflict, joy along the valley's rocky path, and love for which there is no worthy opponent. Following the lighting of the Christ candle, you're invited to light your candles and to sing along to an instrumental rendition of a melody of carols. We continue together in prayer. Blessed are you, O God of strength and of vulnerability. Blessed is your servant Mary, and blessed is the holy child of her womb, born into poverty and exile, to proclaim good news to the poor and freedom to the oppressed, who emptied himself of power and became foolishness for our sake. Heaven's child laid in a manger. 
God's anointed laid in a tomb and yet not held there but risen from the dead made one with him and one with each other we lay before you these gifts of bread and wine in deep appreciation for here we offer and present ourselves to you our bodies minds and spirits to be a holy and continuous sacrifice to you pour out your holy spirit on us O god and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of christ that we may be for the world the body of christ redeemed by his blood our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen as your word became flesh on that night long ago so on the night in which he gave himself up for us he took bread gave thanks to you broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over he took the cup gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples saying drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant do this in remembrance of me Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. body of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ the blood of the one who will come again to take his people to himself feed on him with faith and thanksgiving in your hearts
Let us pray together. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we pause in this moment to give thanks for our families and our friends, for the dry and warm homes that many of us enjoy, for the gift of laughter and festivity. And at the same time, we remember before you those whose plans to be with the ones they love most have had to be postponed or cancelled, those who will spend this Christmas in quieter than usual settings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the men and women who have had the courage to start small businesses, whose skills and hard work have added to the fabric of our society and have sustained the livelihoods of employees and their dependents, for those who have faced closure and for those fighting to stay open. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are unwell at home or in hospital, and for those whose duty and whose calling it is to show them kindness and care, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving, and who for the first time are facing Christmas without a loved one at their side, and those who continue to bear the burden of loneliness, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the children and the elderly who will wake up tomorrow without a present and who do not have a comfortable place to sleep and who battle to access good and nutritious food. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Think about how many ways our world has been hurt by the coronavirus and by lockdowns. And we pray for those whose losses have been small and large and in some cases irreplaceable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, O oh Lord, we pray for ourselves that the wonder and the mystery of Christmas would not pass us by unnoticed. Grant each of us, we ask, the will and the wisdom to accompany our prayers with appropriate actions to your praise and glory. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our closing hymn, and let's lift the rooftops together as we sing Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. I do hope that even in light of this peculiar way of being together, you've had some sense of connectedness to the church, to one another, and an awareness of the nearness of God to each and to all of us. Do be reminded of our Christmas Day service tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, one which seeks, amongst other things, to be easily accessible to our children and to, to celebrate the excitement and the anticipation of the day. Our office will be closed from today until the 4th of January. Some of the staff will be taking an additional week or so's leave. If you have any pastoral emergency over this time, please do feel free to be in touch with me directly. Many of you will know that St. Columbus celebrates 100 years next year a milestone of epic proportions, and we plan to celebrate accordingly. Please do uh, look out for details as they emerge, 
and feel free to be involved as fully as possible in the events of this year. What remains is for us to extend our heartfelt and warmest greetings from the best of family, from the Anquetil family, from all of the staff here at St. Columbus to you and to yours. As we part company, know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you this day and always. Amen.